start off, I have never seen this movie. However, the title had me sold in this 1987 classic. The synopsis tells us it is a story about a young lady that is kept away from boys by her overprotective mother because flames tend to spontaneously erupt whenever her hormones are aroused. For her protection, she often carries around a small fire extinguisher on dates or other events. So with that, let's go. So five seconds in, I have a headache. I know this was filmed in the 80s, but it really has the feel of a Logitech webcam taken straight from your mom's gateway computer. There is not much of an opening to the film, we are just in it. And one thing I find a bit distracting is there's almost no music, but then it's followed by too much music. Well, to burn up the whole town. Mom! I'm sorry, April. <sighs> We open on a charming home and fresh cookies are being baked. Now I want you to remember these cookies, they are critical to this very complex plot. And then we see a child that's on a leash. Wait, that doesn't seem right. Nope, that's what it is. This is mom. I mean, that's what she's credited as, mom. Who right away, based on the previous scene, seems a bit off. The kid escapes her leash and puts this cat on a leash. The cat bites a bit and then this happens. <laughs> At this point, I'm still not sure what's going on in the movie, but the day ends, and the following day we see Mom warning her daughter to stay away from boys, and that this warning should be heeded. Headed. Headed. You should heed the warning. Nobody would heed of, would heeded, heeded head. of, head. Would, no one headed, take headed of. no one would take headed of my instructions. We cut to years later, and our lead character April is now older, and she's headed on a date, when tragedy strikes, and she slips on something. I don't really see anything, but she slips on something. And the plant catches on fire, and there's really no point or context to this at this point, but that's what happens. But no worry, April's got this, cause she has her fire extinguisher with her. So now we begin to learn that every time April gets excited, as the synopsis states, she begins to catch things on fire, but she has it under control. 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 Control! 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 So back to the date and fires go off everywhere, ending with the car catching on fire, and that's basically the premise of this movie. Now we'll take a little moment here to talk about our cast. We have Michelle Meinring, who plays April Flowers, whose career seemed to be on track with films like The Outsiders and Real Genius, then this movie, and basically never acted again after that. Then we have Mom, played by Barbara Harris, who has done a bunch of work, and then this movie, a few more things, and she was never in anything else. And then we have William O'Leary, who plays Andy, who's been in quite a bit. And he's in a film called The Faceless Man, which honestly has me intrigued. <laughs> And most importantly, Wallace Shawn is in this movie. He didn't fall? Inconceivable. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. And his performance makes the movie. It's funny, delightful, and he plays Ellen, not Helen. Now back to the movie, we see Mom mixing up some sort of chemicals and reading about arson, and this is when we know that Mom may not be such a good mom after all. And it's at this time, April reunites with her childhood crush, Andy. And the flame, pun intended, is still there. Since the love is still there, she begins to get excited, and making sure not to burn up everything, she tries to run home with moderate success. This is when Andy lets us know he's moved back into town with a ping pong scholarship. With this well-delivered, not at all robotic line. I'm up for a ping pong scholarship to play in China. I'm up for a ping pong scholarship to play in China. So far, if you're keeping track, we have a love story of a couple that cannot be together. Exactly like Romeo and Juliet. What satisfaction can I have tonight? She then wants to show Andy what the problem is. She tells the kids to scram, but don't worry, Mom has set up a trap. But in this case, the trap fails. And April is very happy about that. And Mom does try to remove the explosive off of Andy's butt that she put there, and honestly, this scene did make me laugh out loud. <laughs> Ow. 
So now I'm a bit confused here. So the movie says mom was behind all of this. So she set up the whole restaurant scene with all the fires, all the explosions. I mean, that's some diabolical planning. And it's not long after this, she then burns Andy. I mean, this is some criminal minds level stuff she's playing at. Sometime later, Andy is at home reading and mom says April has a split personality disorder. And you expect me to believe that? There is good April and bad April, and it's bad April that is starting the fire, according to the real criminal, Mom. Mom then heads to the hospital, no way more, no hospital, and she pulls aside some orderlies to start a new plan. The orderlies are pushing this dresser out, talking about ping pong, and that gets Andy's attention. At least I think they are orderlies, or maybe I'm just thinking about that old Fat Boys movie. <laughs> Anyway, Andy overhears them and catches up. He falls for the trap. We see Wallace Shawn, who we have established is an arsonist, talking to his doctor and the doctor is saying that he needs to make friends and really put himself out there. After that is when he sees April, and his big plan to meet somebody new is to creep behind a plant. But then he does come back out and starts talking to April. They both state that they start fires, however, for very different reasons. While April is not doing it on purpose, Vizzini definitely is. Inconceivable! Thinking they have a lot in common, Ellen starts to fall in love with April. Now back to mom's new diabolical plan. Apparently the orderlies have now strapped down Andy and they deliver a message from April. Well, actually mom. And it looks like they are about to torture him. Man. <laughs> oh, don't forget the message. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the message. This is April's way of saying, I love you. <laughs> At that time, April's called back for her doctor's appointment so she doesn't see what's going on. Then the orderlies hold down Andy and shave his legs. Yeah, that's right, that was the plan to shave his leg. Well, one leg, I think. And they say that it's April who put them up to this. April walks in and finds Andy who has had his leg shaved, or one leg. I mean, what is with Andy? I get it, he likes April, but he needs to let it go. Now mom is hanging out in the shower with Andy, because of course she is. He is shaving his other leg, so I guess it was just one leg, and now he's making them match. Mom then offers him $5,000 to leave and never see April again. Andy, yes, take the money. Let April know what is going on and get out of there. He then confronts the mom about having his leg shaved, which she admits. Did you set me up in the hospital to have my leg shaved? Yes, I did. Andy asked if she is behind all of this, and she says yes. Now I have seen plenty of movies with villains. They usually do not just admit their evil plots simply by being asked, but she does. Andy feels trapped in the shower with her in the room, so he gets this brilliant idea. He takes some shaving cream and makes shaving cream shorts out of it. I mean, he's very confident about that shaving cream. By now, Andy knows enough details about mom. Why does he not just go to the police? We then find out the problem with his shaving cream shorts idea is that they are actually hair removal shorts. So yes, Andy being the genius he is basically smears Nair all over his junk. And on a side note, speaking of Andy, does he not kind of look like Plop from The Office? Um, Pete. Da, 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 da. When Outward Bound, it was all about nicknames. They called me Iceman. You will be called Plop. What? Why? Because you're always taking dumps. No, I'm not. Come on, everybody defecates. Relax, Plop. Anyway, April has a great plan to take an ice bath in order to hopefully kiss Andy. So she takes her ice bath, comes out nice and cold so she doesn't start any fires, and Andy refuses. I mean, come on, man, after all she went through, and he sticks by her through everything, and now he's like, nah. But he does finally give in, and Mom works quickly to get some C2 or whatever this fire-causing putty is to catch fire. It doesn't work, so Mom improvises and says the cat is on fire after tricking them by burning some sort of paper. And this poor cat, man, just gets blasted with this fire extinguisher. Fluffy! Oh, Fluffy? My baby! Oh! Oh! oh. oh. I mean, I'm sure it's a fake cat. But then Andy uncovers that the cat was never hurt. And the battle with mom goes on. He calls her out on all her BS while then walking in on her while she's getting dressed with this classic line. Give me my robe. I'm not here to talk about robes. 
Andy then decides to get proof by recording her, which he does. But then mom leaves the lotion out saying that he should, you know, use some lotion since he just put nair all over his body. And the cops seeing some disturbance show up at the door and mom tells another tale. He took that razor and shaved all the hair off of his hoo-hoo. So the police go up to Andy and arrest Andy. Andy gets sent to jail instead of just taking the 5k and leaving, he chooses this. Wallace Shawn also got arrested from what I understand for asking for a phone number for April from his psychiatrist, so they sent him to jail. Inconceivable! I guess, I don't know. Anyway, Wallace Shawn and Andy end up in jail together. They begin to talk and they bond. Andy tells his plight about April and they trick the guard using the old parent trap switcheroo and Andy is freed. He rushes to save April and finally put a stop to this. I mean Andy is possibly the worst hero ever. He shows up just to get hit by a car. Oh, green. Okay second worst hero. Now his big plan is that he now pours gasoline on himself to help prove that mom is the one behind everything with the hopes that she won't commit murder. He puts April up on her trash can to make sure she's safe. He accuses mom again and tells April to kiss him because he doesn't think the mom would fry him. I mean, she just might from what we've seen so far. But just then, some little idiot comes walking by with a sparkler, because why not, and throws the random sparkler at Andy. A fire starts and mom saves him. April then finds mom's boom boom remote and finally catches on. And she just goes crazy pressing buttons. I mean, she basically destroys the house. After uncovering the truth, they then decide to move and not arrest this woman, just move. They say that they cannot take the cat as they eat cats in China where they want to move. You can keep Fluffy here. They eat cats in China. I mean, that's not okay to say, is it? I don't, I don't know anymore. Mom then makes up another lie. She says the cookie she made when April was a child used vanilla extract and there was a rare poison in the extract called mini flan. And this substance was used in the cookie she made. Remember the cookies? I told you they would be important. So these cookies is what actually is causing the problems. And that this rare poison when the body temperature rises could start fires and April could explode. And April falls for it. She's like, oh yeah, that makes total sense. But Andy's not buying it. Mom goes on to say that these cookies once metabolized makes it so she can never make love with a boy or she will explode. Andy says there's only one way to prove that mom is lying. We've tried everything. When mom goes upstairs to check on them, they're actually not there. After getting home, there's a note that says, Dear Mom. Boom. Mom decides to lay it all out there and she sits at the door admitting to everything. But like I said, it turns out they're not in the room and they made a run for it. And they did not buy whatever mom is dishing out. And again, with this poor cat. Three, Bob. I mean, what do you expect? I know it was a terrible thing I did. It's because I never learned the hardest part. I never learned to let go. The police are then called on their 80s PC speaker after putting ketchup on sushi. Put a little ketchup on there now. Uh, it just spices it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. All units be advised the city jail is burnt down. The nature of the fire is suspicious. Yeah, you heard me. And it turns out that Ellen is a real criminal and causing arson fires. Inconceivable! And he gets a plan to sabotage the kids when he finds out that Andy and April are together. The seed of jealousy is activated. And then he slips on the flower and hits his head. Like I said, Wallace Shawn is the best part of this movie and it's really a shame he was not in it more. His heart is broken. They begin to get their groove on, but Ellen then knocks and gives them flowers that are rigged with explosive. And they fall for this again. I mean, you would think at this point they would learn to be a little more careful. Ellen and Mom interact and he admits everything he's trying to do. Mom didn't want this to happen so she tries really hard to get their attention, but they ignore her. So this part they're willing to ignore. So they begin their romance and... Nope, it was just thunder, they're quite alright. But then, boom! For real, 
the real boom. Mom is now distraught about the years of torment she's caused. Andy carries out April who appears dead, and in a very dramatic scene Andy says you won. Mom then breaks down, and Andy drops April? I mean, he just drops her. Even if she was dead or if she's not dead, you shouldn't just drop her. So they both get up and rush to comfort Mom, and it turns out April was faking it. She said she wants to get even for all the jokes Mom played on her. Jokes? She blew up a car, and that's the most minor infraction I can think of. But then it comes out that Mom knew they were faking it, because she was then joking them. And this is the big climax of the movie. They all make up and Andy forgives. That's right, they all just laugh it off like it's all okay. Andy then lives his ping pong dream, wins the big match, and they live happily ever after. So the moral of the story is that you can cause chaos and commit unspeakable crimes as long as you say you were just joking. Now don't take just my opinion on this movie, let's take a look at one of the reviews from DigiAstrid23 on IMDb. They say, My mom and I love this movie, it's a straight 80s classic. The mother-daughter relationship is perfect. If you're a single mom with a single daughter or a single daughter with a single mom, watch this together. The characters are awesome. We quote this movie to this day and have forced many to watch it. This is why I still have a VHS player. In my opinion, it's not a good movie, but do I recommend it? I 100% recommend you watch this movie. It's a good bad time. And that's a wrap on Nice Girls Don't Explode. If you like this little conversation about this movie, why don't you go ahead and watch Night of the Comet with me over here. Thanks, friends. So